Paul Starr, The Creation of the Media, Political Origins of Modern Communications. Embark on a captivating journey through the evolution of media and communications in The Creation of the Media, Political Origins of Modern Communications by Paul Starr. This summary illuminates the history of print media, from the era of early manuscripts to the rapid growth of mass media. Discover how the Reformation, literacy rates, postal systems, and the American Revolution contributed to shaping the media landscape we know today. Unravel the political and economic factors that influence the development of telegraphs, telephones, radio, and film. In a world dominated by modern communication, this summary serves as an insightful guide to understanding the origins and growth of the media that has shaped and continues to shape our lives. The Evolution of Print Media and Communications Since the beginning of printing in the Western world around 1450, publishing has rapidly expanded from hand-copied books in limited quantities to widespread distribution channels. The religious conflict fomented by the Protestant Reformation in 1517 helped the printer's cause as they relied on the printing press to promulgate their theology, becoming perhaps the first reform movement in history to use print to promote its cause. The advent of printing in 1450 was a paradigmatic example of change in information technology, yet it was equally a change in economic organization. Private postal networks linked much of Europe in the late 1400s and early 1500s, aided by state postal systems in France and England. These postal links helped create news networks with correspondents who provided economic and political news, which gave rise to commercial newsletters printing commodity prices and exchange rates as early as the late 1500s. Newspapers were banned in England until 1636, and their development accelerated as the English Revolution brewed. As of 1712, some 20 weekly papers were being published in London, and by 1620, seven major European cities had weekly newspapers. After the Revolution, a distinctively American communications framework developed which both borrowed from and rejected Britain's legacy. The U.S. model was based on a broad postal system, commercial printers, high literacy rates, numerous newspapers, and civic involvement. The wider availability of published material was accompanied by increased literacy and broader access to education. The government also established a procedure to conduct a national census, publish those results, and protect participants' identity. Unlike European governments, the U.S. government subsidized newspapers rather than taxing them, which made newspapers cheaper and more accessible. The defining features of the 20th century liberal state were not only its greater power and scale but also new and stricter limits on its power so as to protect what came to be called civil liberties. The Telecommunications Revolution the electric telegraph's invention in the 1840s revolutionized global communication, yielding significant technological and political impacts in America and Europe. In the U.S., the government initially funded the telegraph's construction, connecting Baltimore and Washington with Samuel Morse's invention. Although many suggested that the U.S. Postal Service should own the telegraph, it was considered a novelty with little mundane commercial value, resulting in leading politicians deciding against massive government-sponsored infrastructure. Instead, newspaper publishers took an interest in the telegraph as an excellent complement to their businesses. The telegraph's development was accelerated with favorable public policies, supplemented by free rights of way for wires along canals and roads, and partnerships with the railroads, allowing them to communicate train schedules, freight logistics, and other relevant information. Since communication improvements induced better trafficking, railroads were tempted to save money by laying only one set of tracks over long distances. Telecommunications revolutionized the world, and governmental supervision became crucial for sectors such as gas, telephone, electricity, and urban transit, which marked the second industrial wave. The Politics Behind Communication Technologies when the telephone was first introduced in the U.S. in 1876, it had to compete against the well-established telegraph. In Europe, telephone service grew slowly due to unfavorable private financing and the telegraph monopoly run by postal authorities. 
France discouraged private investment but also reserved the right to rescind phone concessions if the service succeeded. The introduction of other communication systems created different technologies, but Alexander Graham Bell refused to allow other systems to connect to his network, just as Marconi refused with his wireless telegraphy. However, as Marconi's service impacted ship safety, international concerns arose about excluding competing systems. Meanwhile, in Britain, public complaints about high rates led to the nationalization of the telegraph industry by 1870. These examples show how political choices have played a significant role in determining the growth and development of communication technologies. The Birth of Mass Media About 50 years before the start of World War I, access to culture widened among Europeans and Americans, leading to the growth of mass media. The emergence of efficient production and distribution techniques, coupled with a diverse population, paved the way for more publications. Immigrants played a vital role in media growth, notably in the U.S., as penny press rivals William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer utilized warmongering politics to attract new readers and build media empires. While newspapers targeted a more upscale audience, burly films, or Nickelodeons, were considered blue-collar immigrant entertainment. The U.S. government made an early policy commitment to expand national communication, and this reached a climax with World War I's onset in 1914. Before the war, communications in the U.S. developed at a faster rate than in Europe. The extensive national network covered vast areas, and access was cheaper and more readily available than in rural Europe. The effort's primary focus was to encourage media use, foster public confidence in the system, and provide an economic reward for those who developed the infrastructure. The Evolution of Media The 20th century saw the rise of film and radio, which brought with it challenges about censorship and regulations. The emergence of the U.S. movie industry led to legal disputes over patent rights and control over distribution. Eventually, the independents replaced the Edison Trust and gained commercial control of the industry. While radio expanded into a national network in the U.S., it was hobbled by centralization, licensing, and nationalization in Europe. American radio and television development were not taxed but allowed to thrive in a commercial model that affected the growth of communication worldwide. In The Creation of the Media, Paul Starr sheds light on the origins of modern communications, tracing its evolution from print media to telegraph, telephone, radio, and film. Throughout the journey, we see the significant influence of politics, economics, and culture on the media's growth. Identifying the widespread impact of literacy, revolutions, and technological innovations, this insightful summary captures the essence of historical factors that have shaped today's media environment. As the future of communication continues to evolve, the lessons gleaned from history will prove crucial in making informed and impactful decisions about the media that lies on the path ahead.